part four on how I joined a cult. So in the middle of the block party, he literally puts holy water on his hand, slams it into my face and says, rebuke the devil. And I'm telling him, please get off of me. And he squeezes my arm so hard to the point it's bleeding. The blood wasn't dripping from my arm or anything like that. It was almost like an Indian burn bleed. And my skin was torn, which is why I was bleeding. And anyway, these group of guys got him off of me. And the group of guys were telling him to leave and don't come back. And on his way out, he was speaking in tongues and throwing holy water at me and left. I was so scared and my friends told me, do not go back to the group. So after the whole incident, I didn't go back for months. When I finally came back, it was around Christmas time. And I went back to the group because the date of my dad's death was coming up. When I came into the room of the group, everyone looked at me like I was crazy. Everyone screamed for me to get out and called me all types of Satan and devils. And I never went back. Hmm. You know what? Let's try it. So today I'm testing out She Glam's All Eyes on You Eyelash Glue Liner. I'm excited about this one because there's multiple lashes to choose from. And this one has butterflies. Their liner comes in two. One is black and the other is transparent. Apply the line or however you do your liner. You gotta sit and let it get tacky. Apply the lash on the scale from 1 to 10 when it comes to strength. I give it a 9 because it holds pretty firmly. So apparently lip plumpers are just as good as lip injections. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to be testing Fablux lip plumpers. They have three different colors. This one is first sight, first date, and first kiss. First sight especially helped with nourishment. This is a pretty good plump. First date has like a pinkish tint, but it really helps with the plumping. I really like how this looks. Lastly, first kiss. This one is like a peachy vibe. From the scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 10. There is definitely a difference. Are you a Nicki fan? What? Am I a Nicki fan? Pull up in the Sri Lanka. You piss me off as a shit show. Cause I'm a dude some shit that you can't believe. Smack a bitch into Christmas Eve. When I fight, I do not pull weed. Only thing I'm pulling out is tea. Trying to wake up. Said you got a boyfriend. Fuck that gotta do with me. I know you wanna come slide through. We fin Hey guys, I'm finally back with another story time. I've been on hiatus because I recently moved. Now that I'm settled, I'm posting story times every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. And if you're interested in sending an anonymous story time, definitely go check out my Instagram and DM me. Now let's get into the long-awaited story. This story time is how my psycho ex-best friend almost put my boyfriend in jail. We were friends for six years and things took a turn the last two years. Whenever she had problems, I listened to her, give her advice. But whenever I vented to her, I was ignored and the conversation was dry if we weren't speaking about her. After a while, I distanced myself and became friends with my now boyfriend. I started hanging out with him more and she started to get really jealous. She tried to get me to break up with him, saying he was ugly and broke. When I finally got to my breaking point of cutting her off, I went to her personally and tried to cut off our friendship. We were arguing, going back and forth. Towards the end of our conversation, she yelled and said, my boyfriend forced himself on her. Let me know if you guys want a part two. Part two on how my psycho ex best friend almost put my boyfriend in jail. So me and her was arguing and I was seriously trying to end our relationship because it was really toxic. Towards the end of our conversation, she yelled at me saying that my boyfriend forced himself onto her. I was so confused on how to react. Even though she was crazy, this was my best friend for six years and I met my boyfriend maybe a couple months ago. And she has never said anything like this to me before. And I started thinking, maybe the reason why she hated our relationship is because of what he did to her. So of course, I immediately ended our relationship and also because she asked me if I could cut him off completely. And I did. A few days later, I asked her if she ever wanted to fill out a police report or tell her parents. She said she was embarrassed and wasn't ready to come out. Two weeks later, my boyfriend, well, ex-boyfriend, pulled up at my house asking me why did I end the relationship. He came to me crying and I told him what she told me. He claimed that he barely had even spoken to the girl. The entire situation was really nasty. And at this point, I really didn't know who to believe. So I confronted her about it, which I'll get into in part three. Part three on how my psycho ex-best friend almost put my boyfriend in jail. So I went ahead and went to my best friend's house and told her what he told me. She said that he was lying and he was just trying to separate us. She even told me to call the cops if he ever popped up at my house like that ever again. And I'm like, yeah, she's right. He should never popped up like that. But he was blocked. So he really had no other way of communicating with me. Anyway, over time, I kept asking her if she ever wanted to go to her parents about it. 
or take legal action. And she would always say that she wasn't ready and wasn't comfortable. And of course, I had to understand that because those type of situations are really traumatic. I don't know, maybe a year after the situation, her attitude hasn't really changed. She was still the same psycho, crazy, and manipulative friend. I don't know, I think over time I just started to get tired of her, even after what happened to her. A couple months later, I still asked her again if she ever wanted to press charges. I think she got fed up with me asking, and she told me that the whole thing was a prank. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. She was like, yes, it was a prank, and the prank is over now, and it doesn't matter anymore. I blacked out. Story time on why I don't trust male doctors, specifically the ones that work with the female body. So the summer of 2020, a couple days before my sister's birthday trip to Miami, this might be TMI, but my JJ was tingling. It felt weird, but I ignored it. The next day, it was so painful that I couldn't even sit down. But I assumed that it was an ingrown here because I would get them time to time. Anyways, later that night, I met up with my boyfriend to go to his house. As we were walking, he noticed that I was limping. I, of course, told him my whole situation about what was going on down there. He said, the pain is hurting to the point where you're limping. You should head to the hospital. So we went to the hospital immediately so I could find out what was going on. So we went to the hospital immediately so we could find out what was going on. And there were times of that night my boyfriend assumed that I had some type of STD, which wasn't the case. When the first doctor saw me and checked me out, they were so confused what was going on. So they brought in a different doctor. And I'll get into what exactly that doctor did to my body in part two. Part two on why I do not trust male doctors, specifically the ones that work with the female body. So the second doctor came in and he told me to open up my legs. And this man immediately took three fingers and shoved it in. When I tell you that was the most painful experience I've ever had in my life, it was so painful. More painful than childbirth. He was twisting his fingers as though he was looking for something. He couldn't tell me exactly what it was, but he said that I should be fine. Maybe five minutes later, a nurse came in. She said the doctor said that I had lymph nodes and they prescribed me with three different drugs. And they put a shot in my butt. If you have the option to get in your arm, get it in your arm. When I got done, I went back home, started taking the drugs. The drugs made me feel really sick. I was shaky, fatigued, getting heat flashes, nausea. And my heart was racing super fast. And still with the drugs, the pain was not going away. A few days later, I went back to the hospital because the drugs just weren't working. And when I got checked out, I was diagnosed with something completely different than what I was told. Which I will be getting into in part three. Part three on why I do not trust male doctors, specifically the ones that work with female bodies. So like I said, I went back to the ER and was diagnosed with something completely different. So all the prescriptions that the doctors had me taking were the wrong drugs. So the process of me being in the hospital, a different doctor had checked me out. When I told the other doctor what I had or what I was told by their other doctor, he was like, lymph nodes? Who told you that? I said, one of your doctors and he gasped. And he told me that I had a Bartholone cyst. He said he could drain it, but there's a risk of it coming back, and it did. And I told him, please drain it because it was very painful. The first step to draining it was numbing it, and he had to prick my JJ 10 times with the needle, which was also painful. Then he had to make a cut to drain it. At that point, I was about to pass out because I could literally feel everything. The numbing was not working. Plus, I was extremely embarrassed because there were like five other men with my legs busted open. And I cried the entire process. No one asked if I was okay. They rushed the whole process.